This movie is about editing cubes, which are arrangements of eight different filters along with associated parameters and sequences for the Morpheus. Now Morpheus does come with a very detailed manual, so consider this to be the short form of it. I'll give an overview of what a preset is, show how to program a sequence, then show editing the presets themselves. Now the first thing is, you might think you might get to actually edit those cubes in terms of putting which filter you want into each corner and then crossfade in between them. Well, unfortunately, that's just not practical. You see, those aren't just eight different modes that you crossfade between. They're very detailed configurations that might include, say, a low-pass filter, a bunch of EQ stages, etc. And you don't just crossfade, you need to line up individual poles of the filter and do morphing, such as this patch does. You can see how those individual peaks and valleys, notches and bands, move, fade in, fade out, etc. It's not just a matter of doing a simple crossfade. And I asked Marco Albert at Rawson just what was involved, and he said they needed a dedicated program, and it was literally hundreds of parameters to edit per cube, and it might not even work out, because some of these different peaks may line up in certain ways that blow out your speakers. But you can still do some editing inside Morpheus, I want to show that to you. Now right now I have a filter sequence selected, that's that blue line of text, that's the name of my sequence. So as I change the data select knob, I just go between those presets that are in my filter sequence. I could automatically step between those sequences by using the increment, decrement, and reset inputs on the Morpheus module. These are simple gate level inputs to step through the presets in a sequence. For example, I'm gonna borrow my two sliders, these two signals, and just plug them in briefly into increment and decrement. There's increment, there's decrement, and you see how I can step through individual presets or step back through them as well. Reset puts you back to the very start of the sequence. I'll put my control voltages back before I forget what I've been doing. To load a sequence, you press the load button and you scroll through a nice list they've made of grouping together different sets of similar filter cubes. To load the selected sequence, you either press load sequence for a couple of seconds or press the encoder knob. To program a sequence, you press the program button where you get a list of all the presets that are currently in this sequence. You can change any one of these by pressing the encoder, it's highlighted in red, and selecting what preset you would prefer to be in there. The very top of the list is the null filter. That's no processing whatsoever, just pass the sound through untouched. So it's a nice way to have a no processing intermediate step. And down at the bottom of the list are special things such as deleting a step out of a sequence, inserting a step if you need to put something right in the middle, but also altering the fade times of how fast each individual cube goes to the null patch, then goes to the next sound. And I'll show you how to edit those in a second. In addition to those different fade modifiers, finally, you have these things called bumpers, where if you're incrementing or decrementing, you'll hit the bumper, then go back the other direction in the list. When you hit a pause step in a sequence, the increment and decrement won't work. You'll need a reset to say, okay, let's go back to stepping through this particular list. And then a halt, which also says don't step beyond this point until we get a reset command. Otherwise, a reset says go back to the start of the list, and you can indeed increment through the end of the list back to the start again, and vice versa. I'm going to exit program by pressing it again. To save the sequence, I press save once, pick what new slot I want to put it into. Now Morpheus ships with 15 different sequences. I've added two to the end. You can have up to a couple hundred sequences in here, so that's not a problem at all. We can also erase the sequence. But I just pick, you know, the next one in the list. Say, let's go to that one. And then I get a chance to rename it. I can go through the individual characters, press encoder, change the names if I want to. Don't know what a flasher is, but it's quick for a demo. And then finally, whenever you want to save, press and hold either the encoder or the save button for two seconds you'll see a countdown to the very top of the module display. And there's my new sequence. To get out of this mode, you can press filter sequence for two seconds. You notice it's gone dim, and now I can just scroll through presets individually. There's also a sequence called sequence off. So as you've seen before, I can go ahead and just select a different preset, and when I see a name that catches my eye, press the button. I'll fade to the null sound, then fade to this particular preset. I'm going to change the one I wanted to edit. I was playing around earlier with this particular 
somewhat mild preset that I wanted to add a little bit more spice to. There we go, mild Q pole. Now you notice on my data, the blue is my input waveform, which is about plus or minus five volts right now. And the green is the output coming out of the Morpheus. You can also see with the little displays along the very top, that for the left and right channels, the very top is the input coming in, the middle is the distortion dialed in for that particular patch, and then the bottom bar for the left is its output range, as output's lower than the input. For the most part, I can't quite get the output to be just as loud as the input. And one exception, so if I boost up resonance, I get kind of close, but not quite there. So if I want to make this patch louder, I press the Ed button, and I have a whole list of parameters I can edit for that cube. Now, among other things, you can pre-bias these controls. For example, if I say, you know, that's not the lowest frequency I really want in this default setting. I can only go up from there. I wish I was starting lower. I can go down to the frequency CV offset, press encoder once to now edit this parameter and now change the offset. Now, I have a very muted sound with that new value. Same with the morph and the transform controls. I can offset those as well. I can scale the individual inputs so I can make it more sensitive or less sensitive to voltages coming in. As you can see from the legending around the dials, it's used to a minus five to plus five range. However, some modulation sources may go up to eight or even 10 volts. Well, you can alter the response or narrow it down to a small range using these controls. There's the fade time to say how long to fade into this filter from the null. So remember, whenever you change settings, you come from the previous filter setting to the null, no processing, and then into the new filter. As you can imagine, you also have an exit fade time as well. Finally, we have these gain controls. I'm gonna go ahead and bring them both up here. Right now it's defaulting to minus six dB of gain. And that's why we're not really pushing the filter very hard. If I wanted to, I can make this filter hotter by increasing the input gain. I can do left and right channels individually. And then there's also distortion. I can decide if the transform input, this third input, Z, instead gives me control over the depth of distortion and I can also manually set the distortion. So even if I'm not using the transform input for distortion, I can still set distortion for this filter. Distortion is not ordinary clipping. It's kind of different for each filter. Like this one actually gets very resonant as I increase the distortion. Go to an intermediate setting there, edit that parameter and start increasing its distortion. And you can see on the spectrograph how the sound changes. There's it settled into a steady state. Let's start cranking up the distortion. Here it's got more of a resonant sound. You see some more formats appearing up high in the spectrum analyzer. It's also a bit noisier in general. And you can really push to extreme levels. Or you can back out and make it a cleaner sound. The default I think was around here, but I can make it a warmer sound like around there. These Changes are not saved until you use the save button. And then the routine is very, very similar to how it was with sequences. I press the save button once. I get to pick what new location to put this in. You see that little scrolling message across the top just to remind me what to do. Morpheus comes with just under 300 presets, but there's room for a thousand. So I can go ahead and pick any empty location. Let's pick 292, for example. I can decide to edit the name, again, by pressing the encoder dial, choosing which character I want to edit, press the encoder, go ahead and change the character. And then when I'm done and want to save, don't press edit again, press and hold save for two seconds. That's the only way you're going to save this preset. Well, you can also press and hold the encoder for two seconds. You see the countdown, and now it's been saved. So in addition to having 300 presets and some nice ways of organizing those presets, you can indeed slightly modify the sound of those presets to your taste, particularly by managing gain and distortion, because since this module can really boost individual harmonics, there's a much higher chance you're going to clip with this module than perhaps with other filters. Fortunately, you can do a bit of tweaking of those parameters with Morpheus. Mm -hmm.